because this is a confusing passage, because it's a hard passage, this is what oftentimes cult groups do, is they take hard passages, build really detailed theology systems based off of a confusing passage, and then they make you try to accept it because they quote a verse you don't understand. And it's really kind of a, a weird tactic they have. Never let someone cause you to embrace all this theology because you don't understand a verse. Like, Did Mike Wainer just call Christianity a cult? Not me, Mike Wainer. Let's take a look and see what he says. Now, of course, Mike Winger is not intending to call Christianity a cult here. He's actually talking about Mormonism. Um, this is a sermon he recently on his YouTube channel, he posted a link to his 25 video series of finding Jesus in the Old Testament. And um, this is, particular sermon is on Melchizedek. And um, what he's saying is that the Mormons basically take this obscure passage from the Old Testament and create a whole new theology and a whole new priesthood in their church based on it. Now, in Christianity, they also take this passage, and as Mike Winger will tell you, they say a lot more about it in the book of Hebrews than the Old Testament actually says about it. Here's what he has to say on that. That's all we get. Like, that's all we have about Melchizedek. And you wouldn't think that much about him. You'd kind of be like, who was that guy? Like, what was going on? But there's more we get in Psalms, and then there's more in the book of Hebrews, where it directly tells us Melchizedek is related to Jesus. So in the book of Hebrews, they take Melchizedek, and they tell us a lot more about him. Now, you might be saying, in Hebrews, everything they say is consistent with the Old Testament. But here's what Mike Winger actually says about the book of Hebrews and what it says in there. Um, the Old Testament, if you took it by itself, you would never have thought Melchizedek was eternal, right? Like if you just read the Old Testament in isolation of the new, you never would have thought he was eternal. It just wouldn't, he just, he's a guy, he's the king of Salem. He's a priest of the most high God, like, but, but eternal, unborn, undying, like those things. No, I, I don't think so. He's just a guy. <laughs> he's, there's literally what, four verses about him in the book of Genesis. And so Mike Winger takes what the book of Hebrews says as the word of God, just like Mormons take the book of Mormon, the pearl of great price. They take that as the word of God. So they make a whole new theology based off of Melchizedek, which is just what Mike Winger does. But the question is, would one reading the story of Melchizedek or even the reference to him in the book of Psalms naturally apply these things? And Mike Winger says, no. He says, this isn't what one would take it to mean. And I would argue that the Christian Bible even twists in Psalm 110, it even twists what the psalmist says. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now here is Psalm 110 from the interlinear. Um, this is Bible Hub. You see up here, Bible Hub, okay. Um, this here is the interlinear, so it gives you the Hebrew, the Hebrew words in English translation. To prove it's Christian, they have the vowels in the name of God here, okay. <laughs> You'd never get that from a Jewish website. Anyway, a Psalm of David, and if you notice, that's actually of David a Psalm, but I'm not going to get into that. Let's assume that David wrote this song. So a Psalm of David, Hashem, which is um, polite for the name of God. Hashem, <laughs> Hashem said <clears throat> to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Now to my Lord, you'll see this is Ladoni. Um, is this a name of God? Let's check it out because it's capitalized. You might think that this is a name of God, but as we come down here, we see that it occurs 24 times. And what we get here is how a couple of the English translations, we have the um, New American Standard Version, the King James Version. How do they translate these verses? And in Genesis 24, 36, it's to my master. Okay, lowercase again in 54 to my master. 
again in 56 to my master. Then in Genesis 32, 4, we get the word Lord, lowercase, but notice, you shall say to my Lord Esau, certainly Esau isn't God. So when he says Ladoni in regards to Esau, it's a very human Lord. It's not a divine term. Again, same in 32, 5. And in 32, 18, again, to my Lord Esau, he's not calling him God, of course. Uh, 44, 9, we have Lord's uh, lowercase. Again, in 16, the word appears twice, both lowercase l. Verse 33, we see all the way down. Now we get into 1 Samuel. In 1 Samuel, all lowercase l. Um, and this is both, again, the New American Standard Version, the King James Version. None of these are capitalized, as you notice. Second Samuel, same thing. No uppercase. Uh, here we got to my master versus to my Lord, but both of them are lowercase. Uh, first Kings, first Chronicles. And it's not until we get to the book of Psalms 110.1, suddenly this word is capitalized to imply that it's talking about a divine being. It, it's nowhere else is it capitalized in the, in the Christian Bible, in the Christian Bibles, folks, nowhere else is it capitalized. And again, Bible hub. Okay. This is, uh, this is just how it is. Now this is in Psalm 110 one. So we get the capitalization. Um, Hashem said to my Lord, right here, we get it capitalized to imply that it's talking about a divine being when it's not. But this is very important. Let's go ahead and go to verse four, because in verse four is where we're told that Melchizedek will be a priest. This is the the other or a, 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 that allegedly Jesus will be a priest. And Mike Winger's explanation of this, I'm going to play it in a minute, is that whoever this is talking about has to be a descendant of David, and they have to be a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so here we have Hashem has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest. And by the way, you read right to left because it's the Hebrew goes right to left. Um, Hashem has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, here the word priest is Kohen. Um, if we click on this number here, we're going to get the definition of the word Kohen. And it is a priest according to Strong's and according to the New American Standard Version. However, they also offer the definition of chief ministers. Okay. And if you come down here, you're going to see priest, king, example, Melchizedek, compare Psalm 110.4. Okay, but they go on or a chieftain see also or so also probably the sons of David in second Samuel 18. Now, this is important because remember, whoever this is has to be both a Kohen like Melchizedek and a son of David were the sons of David called Kohen in the Old Testament. Second Samuel 8, 18. Remember Samuel's a contemporary of David. He anointed David King. Does Samuel call David's sons Kohen? And the answer is yes, right here. And sons of David chief were chief ministers. Okay. Kohanim. That's the plural of Kohen. We click right here. Same word brings us back to the same point. So in the Old Testament, the sons of David are called Kohen. This does not have to be talking about Jesus. And yet Mike Winger says this. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That is quoted over and over again. And it's always quoted for the same basic reason to establish that the identity of Messiah is greater than David or is Lord or is better than angels. Or he, it's showing how high and lofty Messiah is. So yes, he'd be the son of David, but he'd also be his Lord. Now, that's a question mark, isn't it? How is he the son of David and his Lord? Jesus answers that with a big exclamation point. <laughs> he goes, look at my identity. I'm the son of man and the son of God. That's but it doesn't say that. It does not say that that is a divine being. That is a Christian 
interpolation by putting an uppercase L into that verse. <clears throat> it simply says a son of David will be a Kohen, and according to Samuel, all the sons of David were Kohenim. So this is really Mike Winger doing exactly, well, I shouldn't say Mike Winger, it's the book of Hebrews doing exactly what Mike Winger says the Mormons do. Now, Mike Winger is going to argue, but the book of Hebrews is the word of God. Mormons will argue that the book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price are also the word of God. So they have every right to do what they're doing. The point is, if the Mormons doing that makes them a cult in Mike Winger's eyes, wouldn't the book of Hebrews make Christianity a cult also? Why is it okay for Mike Winger to say that the book of Hebrews is the word of God and therefore they can do that? But then he says that the Mormons can't do that with their scriptures that they also claim to be the word of God. But Mike Winger also, in addition to this, he gives another reason in this video why Mormonism is a cult. They, um, well, here's what he says. Now, I'm just going to pause for a second. Please don't underestimate the incredible importance of seeing Jesus throughout the Old Testament. You can't do this with Muhammad. And I like when people try. You can't do this with Joseph Smith. Remember what happened when Joseph Smith looked to find prophecies about himself in the Old Testament? He added extra verses at the end of Genesis in order to make something there. So Joseph Smith added verses to Genesis to put himself into the text. Um, in another sermon, Mike Winger quotes from Luke chapter 4 in another sermon on this series. Now, if we scroll down here, this is the uh, temptation of Jesus, but then we get down here to verse 18, where he reads from the scroll, and we read here, and, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. We go to Isaiah 61. This is where he's quoting the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So in Isaiah 61, this doesn't necessarily sound a lot like Jesus. Did he open up the prison to those who are bound? Uh, no, but he did offer the recovering of sight to the blind. So we just add a line in there to make it sound more like Jesus. This is the very thing that Mike Winger is accusing the Mormons of here. Yet it is done right here in Luke chapter 4, a verse that he uses in his preaching. But that's just my view on that that i don't have mike winger sitting here saying that to add something to the verses is definitely wrong he's saying to add a whole verse in is wrong i get that but on the subject of uh melchizedek here he definitely calls the mormons a cult for their interpretation here here's the full clip of what he says on that so i, I just got to mention really quick because in the mormon church they believe they have an active priesthood called the Melchizedekian priesthood. And the young men in the Mormon church will be ordained as priests after the order of Melchizedek. That's a total twisting of the scripture. There's only one person who's a priest after the order of Melchizedek. His name is Jesus. But what, because this is a confusing passage, because it's a hard passage, this is what oftentimes cult groups do, is they take hard passages, build really detailed theology systems based off of a confusing passage, and then they make you try to accept it because they quote a verse you don't understand. And it's really kind of a, a weird tactic they have. Never let someone cause you to embrace all this theology because you don't understand a verse. Like, And I'm not, listen, I'm not calling Christianity a cult. I don't even like that term. I wouldn't call Mormons a cult. They believe much differently than I do. They believe much differently than Mike Winger does. I like to steer away from criticizing people for their beliefs, but what the book of Hebrews and what Mike Winger is doing in this sermon is the exact same thing that Mormons are doing 
with this obscure passage from the Old Testament. And I just want to say, it's not that unclear. Mike Winger or the book of Hebrews intentionally makes it unclear. What you had was Abraham going to war, winning a battle. He comes back and he gives, Abraham gives a tenth, a tenth, right? 10% of what he took in the battle to Melchizedek. And Mike Winger calls it a tithe, which to be fair, 10% is a tithe. But if Mike Winger was in a state that had a 10% state sales tax and he went and bought something, would he say he was paying a tithe or a tax? Like, I mean, he, Abraham just gave the guy 10%. Another thing he does in his video is Melchizedek comes out with bread and wine and he goes, ah, Jesus, communion, the Eucharist, bread and wine, right? But the bread and wine is actually a Jewish tradition that goes way back. They still do it, folks. Some of the uh, synagogues are online meetings because of um, COVID. You can attend an online synagogue meeting and see they still do the bread and wine. When Jesus said, do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me, it's because they were already doing it. But yet somehow Mike Winger tries to tie Melchizedek having bread and wine into Jesus with the bread and wine. And it's all distorting this original passage after making it unclear. It's then distorted to try to make it say something it didn't originally say. I'm not calling a Christ, I'm not calling Christianity a cult, but my question to Mike Winger is, if this makes Mormonism a cult, if them having a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek off of this passage in Genesis makes them a cult, you also have a priesthood in your church off of this passage in Genesis. How does that not make your church a cult? I'm just saying, if the shoe fits the Mormon foot, it has to fit the Christian foot here too. That's not my words. <laughs> well, those are my words. But I, I want to be clear that I am not calling Christianity a cult here. And I think Mike Winger's a good guy. I'm not trying to put Mike Winger down. I, I subscribe to his channel. I watch a lot of his videos. I don't agree with him 90% of the time, but I watch a lot of his videos because I like to learn. I like to stay informed, but I think he's way off the mark on this one here. I'm Steve Perry from biblicalanarchy.com. If you like the video, don't just sit there. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it on Facebook, do something. <laughs>